End of financial year is about getting your books in order so that your accountant can review them. Make any adjustments needed to report the right amounts to the ATO and to give you a clear picture of how your business is going. You don't have to do everything on the 30th of June, but there's some key dates and tasks to be aware of. What you need to do depends on your business type, whether you have staff and what software features you use. This video gives you a quick rundown of what you may need to do and by when, the tools to use to complete these tasks and where to find more help if you need it. Okay, clearly your accountant or advisor is a key player in helping you through this period. If you haven't done so already, get in touch with them and find out what they want you to do. If you're using AccountRight and your file is stored online, invite your advisor to work with you on your books so that if you run into any issues, they can log in and give you a hand. This way, you won't need to stop working or send your file to them. End of year is similar to your other BAS or GST reporting periods. Finish entering all your transactions for the financial year. This includes all your sales, purchases, payments, receipts and employee pays. And then check and confirm that all your accounts are up to date and accurate. The Company Data Auditor can help you with this. If you want to learn more, there's a series of videos that explain how to reconcile each area of your business or join our End of Financial Year webcast, which explains all the tasks we're covering in this video in a lot more detail. If you use AccountRight to keep track of inventory, then you need to do a physical stock take on close of business on the 30th of June. The Count Inventory feature makes it simple to enter any stock adjustments. Print a list of your inventory items and use this report to note down the amounts you count. Once you finish entering all your item sales and purchases for June, you need to compare the stock levels in account right with what you physically counted. Enter the counted amounts here and any differences will be calculated and a stock adjustment is prepared for you. This gets your stock levels up to date and accurate. Moving on, if you pay employees, there's a few more things to do at year end to what you normally do. You need to give your employees their payment summaries by the 14th of July and then send off a file with these details to the ATO. But if your first pay run for July is before the 14th, it's likely you'll do these earlier. The payment summary assistant will take you through what you need to do and there's more help if you need it to make sure you get it right. We have another video and webcast that goes into this in more detail. But do note, before you can start entering pays for July, you also need to close off the payroll year that just finished, install the compliance update, we'll let you know when it's available or go to this website for your options. And finally, load up the new tax tables to make sure your employee's tax is calculated correctly for the new financial year. While we're talking about payroll, are you up with the latest ATO superannuation changes? Employers are now required to report and pay super electronically. The good news is that the pay super feature in AccountRight is SuperStream compliant and easy to use. It'll save you time and meet your obligations. If you're using AccountEdge or an older version of AccountRight, we've also got a SuperStream solution for you. Go to this website to find out more. Next, if you're in the building and construction industry, then take note of this date. This is when your taxable payments annual report is due. If you need to submit this, we've got a simple tool that helps you track and report these payments to the ATO. And when you've completed what you can do, it's time to hand over your books to your accountant. With your file online, they can just log into your file to review your accounts. If you're not online, then get in touch with them to find out what they need. Some accountants just want reports, such as your trial balance, balance sheet, and profit and loss statement. 
These can be found in the Accounts section of the Reports list. Or, if they want a copy of your file, then make a backup, save it to a USB and send it to them. After they review your books, you may need to add some finishing touches. With your file online, they can just log into your file and do it all for you. Or instead, they'll give you a list of adjustments and you'll enter these manually. Mark them as a year-end adjustment so they won't affect your figures for June, but will still be included in the final profit and loss for the year. Your records will then agree with your accountants and you're ready to close off the financial year. There's no rush to do this because you can continue entering transactions and working as usual in the new financial year. So until you do this, here's some tips to take note of. You can lock the financial year. By selecting this preference, it stops anyone from recording anything else by accident to the year you've just finalised. And with some of your reports, like your profit and loss or business activity statement, you'll need to select next year as the filter to display the right amounts. And then when you're ready to close off the financial year, it's easy. Open the assistant and just follow the prompts. Confirm some details along the way and take a backup. Then AccountRight does the rest for you. With a larger file, it may take a little longer, so don't stop the process. And you're done. End of financial year is now sorted. If you need more detail on end of financial year, visit this website, watch more videos, or join a webcast.